Northwestern, and we are so pleased to announce uh, a major addition to our Evanston campus, uh, the uh, athletics and recreation complex that uh, the board approved today. Uh, this is a culmination of, of a lot of work that's gone on over many, many years. Actually, if you go back, we had a master plan that uh, we actually finished about five years ago. And this master plan included the input from uh, outside consultants, our faculty, students, many others, as to how we use our limited space that we have in Evanston. As many of you may know, we, we have about 240 acres, which compared to most major universities, limits us to a degree in terms of how we're able to expand. Related to that then, uh, a few years ago, uh, Jim Phillips uh, really instituted a plan to look at how the, uh, the athletics and recreation piece of this would be included in something that would be, uh, would be able to allow us to create, create a much better community on campus, which is very, really very important for us. And, and that really study, uh, which was led by an outside firm called Populous, uh, came up with some suggestions about two years ago. Uh, we started to work on those suggestions and try to make, make them work within our, with our constraints. And uh, that's what led to eventually the announcement that we had today. So we are very pleased. We think this is great for our, uh, our athletic programs, this is great for our students, this is great for our university. Uh, so with that, let me turn this over to Morty Shapiro, who will give you a little more background. Morty. Thank you, Bill. And thanks to the Board of Trustees for this bold step. Very, very exciting. Um, people have been very patient in the way we do things in academe, particularly here at Northwestern. We think these things out. And, and, uh, great detail and we take our time and we get them right and I think if you look at the variety of different investments and in infrastructure that we've made or are making now they really come out to be fantastic. I, I think this is a game changer in every regard. It's obviously a big step forward, major step forward for a football program but it's a step forward for eight other uh, varsity teams who are located out there in the lake and as somebody who uh, regularly attends lacrosse and field hockey and men's soccer and women's soccer and the like, and I see them without locker rooms walking back to Patton Gymnasium, and I just think, boy, there's got to be a better way to do that. And then having the men and women's swim team and the diving team going up to Milwaukee, just mind-boggling. So uh, we've addressed their needs. Uh, also, of course, we have men and women's tennis there. But it's not just those nine varsity sports, you know, we have 19 and the other 10 are going to take uh, great opportunity to those magnificent new facilities. Uh, one of the blessings of being in Evanston is right there on that lake and everyone's going to see that. But as Bill said, it's not just um, a step forward for football and 18 other varsity sports. It's a major investment in recreation, recreational facilities and the club and um, intramural teams are going to take great use of that, particularly the indoor facility. Uh, and so is the rest of the university. You know, we will be welcoming uh, 2,000 freshmen on Thursday and move-in day, and I'll be hosting them and their parents, you know, at various venues. It's going to be great to have a venue where you could fit 2,500 people. So that indoor facility is going to be not just a practice facility, it's actually going to be a game facility, and I'm sure and with bad weather occasionally happens here in the Chicagoland area, we're going to be playing lacrosse and soccer there indoors, and we're going to use that as a venue for all kinds of gatherings outside of athletics and recreation. So in some, we waited, but we got it, and I think it's just, uh, as I said, a fantastic investment in all of our students and faculty and staff who are now going to be using a recreated facility there on the, on the lakefront that's going to be as good as anything we've ever built in Northwestern. So with that, I turn it over to uh, Jim Phillips. Thanks, Morty. And uh, I first need to recognize a few folks, certainly Chairman Osborne and his leadership and President Shapiro, but the entire Board of Trustees for their support. And uh, as been described, we've developed, I think, uh, a transformational project that uh, has a chance to really um, 
play a part in the roles of student athletes, but all students here on, on campus. And as we talk about academics and higher education, it really is about integration of student athletes with students. And the location and the design of these facilities will certainly do that. But the thanks really go to Chairman Osborne and President Shapiro, Myron Siegel, who heads up Educational Properties uh, Group, because uh, we walked hand in hand for quite a few months to get us to this stage. And I think it's really reflective of the, of the history of the university. When you think about 1850 on May 30th and you think of uh, those 10 folks down on, on the corner of Lake and Dearborn talking about building an institution that had excellence in all of its parts, this is another example and a reaffirmation about Northwestern being a world-class university and having excellence in all of its parts, not only science and teaching um, and all the other wonderful things that happen on our campus, but athletics and recreation. So I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, I know I woke up this morning um, having my fingers crossed with one more step to go. Um, Laura thought I was happier today than, I don't know, I don't want to overstate it. Not, not on the birth of any of my children, but maybe <laughs> just below that um, for what it means because it is an absolute investment in this Department of Athletics and Recreation and it will absolutely touch the lives of every kid on this campus uh, now and well into the future and that's why this is such a historic and, and important day. It truly is transformational. So with all that, I, um, I, I think Paul had indicated we'll open it up for questions from any of the three. And if you'd like to ask a question, please wait for the mic and if it's directed towards one individual on stage, please make sure you mention who that is. Okay, I think President Shapiro is the best. I have uh, two questions. Um, when do you hope that you'll be able to open this? Well, we have to raise a lot of money, Teddy, as you know. Uh, the first, until you get design documents, it's really hard to figure out. But ballpark, we were thinking about $200 million project. Uh, then you add soft costs and contingency, and it goes up to about 220 or so. And I think that's sort of what we shared, I think, Bill, with the board. Um, it's a lot of money, but we, we're not just beginning to raise money today. You know, we, we've been along a path. We've been pretty confident that the board would figure out a way to situate this amazing new investment on the lakefront without uh, interfering with future academic needs and expansions. And they did that brilliantly, as Jim pointed out, Gordon Siegel and that committee, they've been tireless working on that. And they did a great job. But we've been thinking that, well, it's going to be a big price, and we better start, you know, figuring out a fundraising, uh, you know, increasing capacity to raise that money. Because the worst thing would be sort of, you know, have this great plans and see these beautiful buildings, and it just sort of sits on a shelf for many, many years. So we've been busy. We've been busy, and, um, you know, we're hopeful. It's a lot of money, but we raise a lot of money. I mean, we raised $284.9 million last year, right? So, I mean, that wasn't all for athletics, some of it was, but, you know, we have capacity, our fundraising goal this year is $410 million, okay? So, you know, it's a lot of money, 220, dollars but um, we're going to try to raise it as quickly as possible because um, a lot of people have been waiting for this. And it's not just football recruits, but it's, it's as I said, all of our students, faculty, and staff. And once we have this facility, it's going to be just, it's going to be such a great addition the campus. As I said, I wish we had it for Thursday when we greet the parents and then Friday morning when I, and Monday morning, the following Monday when I have the convocation for the freshmen. You know, we don't have a lot of venues steady, as you know, uh, on campus where you can fit 2,500 people. So this is going to be a great one for the indoor facility. Okay, so it sounds like you don't even have a date goal in mind. And also no, I just, I, I just, you know, we put in the press release that we have to raise the money and, and you know, that's what we do. And um, you know, some buildings take longer than others. I, I think there's a lot of excitement about this. And, um, you know, Jim and I and, and Bill have already been talking to people, and I, I, I hope that, you know, we get momentum pretty early, and I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will. But, so we're going to try to raise the money as quickly as possible. And for either you or Jim, what is your hope uh, in the area around here? How could basketball men and women and the other teams here benefit from this? Well, the other part of the populist report that uh, Bill Osborne referred to is other facilities, and some out here on Central, but also elsewhere. Bloomquest, you probably know, and um, the outdoor tennis facility. And they have some great ideas, softball, particularly baseball. Um, but 
Jim said that from the point of view of athletics and, and recreation, the number one priority is this project. And that's what we did. And at the meeting we just came from, um, educational properties, that came up. And they said, well, this is the highest priority. We're going to go for that. And maybe, you know, we don't have to wait for everything to be operational here on the lakefront before we do some things out in Central. We, it depends on the fundraising. But, you know, we have a big goal here, and I, we want to raise it as quickly as possible. And, you know, I don't really want to be distracted about, you know, there's great ideas, and they have wonderful things about how to improve the amenities at Ryan Field and Welsh Ryan Arena, but um, we just okay to a specific project today, and, and that's number one priority. Bill, I don't know if you want to add to that. Oh, no, I think, I think you said it wrong. Other questions? Uh, congratulations, first and foremost. Uh, as you all alluded, uh, th this is going to help all the uh, sports across the university, but can you talk specifically how this will increase uh, the football program here at Northwestern? Well, I would say that uh, the idea today in today's world is to try to make things as seamless as possible for all of your sports. And I've said it publicly and privately, football is the engine that drives this department. It's the emotional engine, it's the financial engine. So um, we have to invest not only in all 19 sports, but, but certainly football. But this will allow our football program to be in the heart of campus and to go seamlessly between classes and training and film work and study hall and practice and weights and meetings with coaches and all the things that football student athletes do on a day-to-day -day basis like never before here at Northwestern. And so certainly there's a, uh, a wonderful aspect of recruiting and being able to tell the story, but it's truly an investment of the kids that are on our campus now. And so David, I just think that uh, this project, though it may have taken longer than some people wanted it, it to, we have the very best uh, project that we could come up with. And we needed the time, we needed the extra days and months um, to get this thing right. And so there's a residual that happens not only with football, but you use that same type of structure for all 19 sports. And to be able to seamlessly go from the areas that I described, it really truly is transformational. President Shapiro, I know you mentioned the fact that you wanted, that you would hope this indoor facility would allow the soccer teams and lacrosse teams to be able to play indoors if there's inclement weather. Was that in reaction to specific <coughs> feedback from either Coach Monty Hiller or Coach Lenahan or Coach Moynihan, or was that just something that became a byproduct of this new um, indoor facility? Yeah, I think we always had it in the back of our minds. Again, if you've ever seen the people you know, trekking out to Patton for the locker rooms and all. And, you know, it's just sort of uh, the investment in that field out there, the field hockey and, of course, lacrosse soccer field. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. They're perfectly located. But they haven't had the surrounding support facilities there, you know, including the porta potty sitting there, right? So um, I, I think it was, there was always the intention of building something like locker rooms and support facilities for them, and, and now we have it. Uh, the other thing I would say, just getting back to what Jim just said, is that if there's anything that's clear, I, I think, with big-time sports, big-time universities, is that you want to integrate all those students. We have 486 varsity athletes. You want to integrate them with all the rest of the students as much as possible. And you also want to integrate the coaches and staff. And that's what it's doing. So when Jim says it brings everybody out to a common place, not a mile away, and there's a lot of good things. This is a beautiful room here. But to have them there, you know, where they see the other students and, and they mingle with the other students was one of the great intentions of that. And that's not just for football, but it's for all the 286 parts of the yeah. We have time for one more from there. Jim, could you just talk about how this might impact recruiting football specifically, but overall as well? Well, I think there's a few dimensions relative to recruiting. Um, it's, it's similar to anything in our life. You need to invest in it if you hope that there'll be some returns on that investment because if you under-resource it and under-support it, then you have very little chance to have success. But if you support it and give it the resources it needs, it really gives you an injection that allows you to compete at the very highest level. So I think it, it, it certainly will be that injection for football, but 
it will be for all 18 uh, other sports. But, you know, as been alluded to, it, it's, it's not just words. This is a great thing for Northwestern University. Um, every tour that happens on our campus with every prospective student will absolutely find its way to this new building. And this will be a sell and a draw for all um, 8,000 of our undergraduate students and nearly 8,000 graduate students. Um, so prospective student athletes, that's an absolute key to this thing. But don't undersell that opportunity that, that allows us now to sell this entire university in a way that we have not had before. And people recreate in a lot of different ways. I think students love a chance to get out of the classroom and get out of the laboratory settings and clear their minds with getting on a treadmill or, or throwing the frisbee around or kicking the soccer ball around. This only enhances their experience as well. And, uh, and that's what makes this thing such an incredible moment for us. Jim, can I add one thing? Uh, I'm in the, uh, I've come from the business world, but I'm gradually becoming more of an academic, I guess. <laughs> but one word, one word that I would use around this is called optionality. And one of the things that made this work was taking what was required in terms of needs from different parts of the university and making it effective for everybody. So we could we have we have a space which can be used for football practice, can be used for soccer, can be used for lacrosse, field hockey. And that optionality was a key factor in how this thing got done. Because because all the all the resources and all the activities we have can be used for multiple purposes. So in the end that, that, it's just something that when you're limited in space and what you can do, it really is something that allowed a little breakthrough. Just yeah, and, and I, I would say one other thing to that as well. Um, our provost Dan Linzer has done an amazing job with this strategic plan, and and one of the important pillars is this building a sense of community. And I, I don't think you can underscore enough this sense of community that we will build in the heart of campus for this integration has been described that will be. Um, an absolutely wonderful moment for our, for our Northwestern community to come together. And that's student athletes, that's students, that's faculty, that's staff, that's the Evanston community, that's all of the folks that are consumers of Northwestern University and recreation and athletics. This gives them an opportunity to build a strong community like never before. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.